When a client comes in to see you and they have pain, they may have already seen their doctor and have a diagnosis. However, sometimes they'll come in and see you first, and so it's important to know about assessment of injuries. One of the first things with assessment is doing a good client history. And when somebody reports pain, it's good to ask questions about the pain. There's a way to remember questions to ask, and that's the letters O-P-Q-R-S-T. The O stands for onset. So you can ask the person, what were you doing when the pain first came on? If it's a neck pain and they got the pain because of being rear-ended, or they got the pain because they were sleeping on the couch watching TV, that gives you a pretty good indication what the pain is about. The P stands for two things. It stands for provoke and retaliate. What makes the pain worse? What makes the pain better? And it's good to know these things. In treatment, you want to avoid doing things that would aggravate the pain. And of course, you can emphasize the things that make them feel better. Q stands for quality. And the quality of the pain can be a good indication about the pain, whether it's dull, sharp, aching, throbbing, burning. And all these qualities mean different things. For instance, a dull pain tends to be more chronic, whereas a sharp pain tends to be more acute. A throbbing pain can be vascular, such as pain of a migraine headache that throbs with the pulse. The R stands for radiation, and that means whether the pain travels from where you feel it most. So say a pain in the neck can radiate down into the arm, or a pain in the low back radiating down the leg. And this is indicative of pressure on a nerve root. S stands for severity, and I measure that by how the pain impacts a person's life if it prevents them from doing certain activities. That shows how severe the pain is. And then T stands for time, how long the pain lasts when they have it, if it's intermittent, if there's certain times of day when it's worse, etc. All that can give you clues about the pain. Now, when a person has pain around a joint, it either can be from a problem in the joint capsule or in the ligaments, or it can be a problem in the muscles itself. And when there's a tearing in muscle or tendon, that's called a strain, with a T. And when there's a tearing in ligaments, that's called a sprain, with a P. And it's important to know that difference. And strains and sprains are graded three different ways. There's grade one, two, and three, also called class one, two, and three, or mild, moderate, and severe. And for instance, a grade one muscle strain is where just a few fibers are torn. The person still can hold against resistance. They still have good muscle function. A grade two muscle sprain, you can have up to 50% of the fibers torn. They can't hold against moderate resistance. There's going to be some edema or swelling around the side of the sprain. And there'll be voluntary splinting, where other muscles will tighten up to help protect the area that's injured. And then a grade three muscle strain is where there's a complete tear at the time of the injury. There'll be a pop or a snap at the time of the injury. And the muscle's completely torn away. And this needs to be evaluated by a medical doctor. You can't really massage that back in place. Now, I want to show you a way of helping to determine when there's a problem, if it's in the muscle or in the joint. Let's assume Carmen has shoulder pain here, and we don't know if it's in the joint, joint capsule ligaments, or if it's in muscle or tendon. There are some ways we can find out. Let's assume that it's in the joint itself. If we do passive range of motion, where I'm just taking her through a range of motion, if this is in the joint, is this going to hurt? Yes. Yes, so there will be pain, okay? Now, if Carmen does active range of motion, would that hurt? Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay? And then if we do resisted isometric, will that hurt? No. No, not as long as the joint's not moving. So with problems in the joint capsule or ligaments, the only thing that's not going to hurt will be resisted isometric movements. Okay. Now, let's say the problem's in a muscle or tendon. If we do passive range of motion, will that hurt? No. 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 Okay, unless I'm actively stretching the muscle or tendon that's hurting. Okay. Now, if she does active range of motion, will that hurt? 
Yes. Yes, yes. it would, because it's uh, move, the muscles being used. Now, how about resisted isometric? Yes. 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 <clears throat> and so that's a way of telling with muscle or tendon problems, because the only thing that won't hurt with muscle or tendon problems is a passive range of motion. Now, with some injuries, you can have injury to the joint, joint capsule ligaments, and to the tendons and muscles, in which case everything you do is going to hurt. Now, this gets a lot more specific, and Dr. James Syriax in his work showed a way of telling with different problems in the body uh, specifically what's going on. And what we'll show in the next section in the video is for shoulder problems, there's a series of 12 different tests for the shoulder to help determine precisely what's going on with shoulder problems. And from Syriax works, you can also determine for other areas of the body the different tests. The work we're going to do on assessing shoulder problems comes from the work of Dr. James Syriax. He wrote a wonderful book called The Illustrated Manual of Orthopedic Medicine. And in this book, he has different chapters on different areas of the body and different pain problems. Chapter on the shoulder has illustrations showing different tests that can be done on the shoulder to help determine the cause of the pain. And these tests are all listed in paragraph format. I found that somewhat difficult in working with clients going back to the book, so I created a form from his work so that I could work on a client write my findings on the form, and then compare it with the book later on to help determine specifically what's going on. There's 12 different tests he devised, and the first one we're going to do is active elevation, where I want you to bring your arm up by your ear. Now with active elevation, the main thing we're going to look for is if there's what he calls a painful arc, where it may be painful between here and here, or through a certain arc of the movement. Was that painful at all? No. No. Good. If there was pain through an arc, very likely the problem is something pinching between the tubercles of the humerus and the acromion process of the scapula. So it could be like a subdeltoid bursitis or some bursitis causing pain there. The second test we'll do for shoulder assessment is passive elevation. For this, we take Benny's arm and bring it up overhead like this. And we're looking for three things here. One, we're looking to see that the range is full or whether it's limited. We're also looking to see whether there's any pain during the range of motion. And we're checking for what we call a hard end feel, where at the very end of the range of motion, if there's a sudden stop or if it still feels spongy at the end. Now, if we get a full range of motion, but there is pain and no hard end feel, there can be a tendonitis, such as supraspinatus or infraspinatus tendonitis. However, if we get a limited range of motion, there's pain and there's a hard end feel, that can be indicative of inflammation in the joint capsule, what Syriax calls capsular pattern or what we can call arthritis. Now for the third test, we're going to do passive abduction of the humerus. And what we're going to do is first brace the scapula because we don't want the scapula to move and then raise the arm like this and we want to see how far the arm goes before the scapula starts to move ideally you should be able to get the arm up to 90 degrees but of course we don't force it so we're checking the range at the glenohumeral joint and if it doesn't go at least 90 degrees there can be a problem in the joint now the next three tests we're going to do together because they help to determine the same problem. Test number four is passive lateral rotation. And we rotate the humerus laterally. We're checking to see the range of motion and if it causes any pain. Test number five is passive medial rotation. You can bring the arm behind the back, see that there's good range of motion and that it doesn't cause pain. And then test number six is passive horizontal abduction, where we bring the arm across the chest. Again, to see how far it goes and whether it causes any pain. If there's limitation or if these three cause pain, it can be because of a problem in the acromioclavicular joint.
Now for test number seven, we're going to do resisted abduction of the humerus. So what I want you to do, Benny, is try to bring your arm out to the side against resistance. And we check to see if this causes pain. Causes a pain with this can be a tear in the deltoid, which is quite rare, or a tear muscle strain in the supraspinatus. Most commonly, it's from supraspinatus tendonitis that will cause this pain. So for test number eight, what we're going to do is resisted abduction of the humerus. Benny, I want you to bring your elbow back to your side. And if this causes pain, it can be because of a problem in the pectoralis major, latissimus dorsi, or teres minor or teres major muscles. For test number nine, we're going to do resisted lateral rotation. The way we do that, so I'll hold your arm like this, and what I want you to do, Benny, is try to rotate your arm outward against my resistance. And then if this causes pain, it can be because of problems in the infraspinatus or teres minor muscles. For test number 10, we do resisted medial rotation. We can do that like this, where I want you to turn your arm in against resistance. And if this causes pain, likely it's from the subscapularis muscle. Test number 11, we do resisted elbow flexion. I want you to try to flex your elbow against my resistance. And if this causes pain around the shoulder, likely it's from the biceps tendon. For test number 12, we're going to do resisted elbow extension. We bring the arm like this, and I want you to extend your elbow against resistance. And normally we would think that this would test for the triceps, but it's rare to have any problem here. What this really tests is that when she's resisting extension, it can push the humerus up in toward the acromion process. And if that happens, there can be pain going down the lateral side of the arm toward the thumb in what's called the C5 dermatome. And so that can show that there's a problem just underneath the acromion process. Now, when you do these 12 tests on the shoulder, you may see a pattern, what Syriax refers to as capsular pattern, which happens when there's an arthritic problem in the shoulder joint. And for each joint in the body, Syriax has outlined the typical pattern that arthritis will show. In the shoulder, typically what you will see is that there'll be some limitation on medial rotation, except in very mild cases. There'll be a greater limitation in passive abduction. There will be greatest limitation in lateral rotation, it's done passively. And there can be a hard end feel on elevation. So if you get those signs, that can be indicative of a capsular pattern or arthritis in the shoulder.